How's it going? Uh, it's going. It's going very well. Um, the mustache probably says it all. It is November. It is November. Is this a mustache? It is. Okay. Yeah. It's it's a semblance of a mustache. Well, it's getting a lot better. A couple days ago, it looked more like fuzz on your face. So okay. Uh, now it's got a bit of body and texture to it. Okay. All right. Uh, by the way, we don't have a microphone set up here, which we do have a microphone set up. So will you guys comment in the description if it sounds a little tinny or hollow? Well, we have a mic set up. We were just sort of thinking that this might work okay. Why don't we put the mics on? We'll put the mics on. You're the maestro. Uh, give them a sense of what we're doing here. Right? So we're going to give you a shop tour. Yes. So we haven't given you a tour of the shop. Sylvie and I worked a lot this week to uh, pretty up the shop and make it where I am. I'm all about efficiency, so we want to make the shop more functional, and we've done that, plus hey, we made it look a lot better. First of all, lighting. Lots of it. I'm going to turn the camera around. Let us know in the comments if the audio sounds better now, and we're going to have Ivan do the shop tour. Give me one second here. We're going to do the flip -a And there it is. So, all right. First of all, tour. well, we started with these lights. Lots of them. And we all need lights. The better lighting we have, the better it is. So in Nick's shop in Utah, we put up a lot of lighting, and now we put up a lot of lighting in here as well. And these are actually really easy to assemble. You can get them on Amazon. They're a lot of fun. Uh, as you know, we have Swiss tracks flooring in here. We had that from the beginning. This is great. It allows us to wash cars, not get our feet wet. Um, I've done other videos on other channels that they have those wash mats. They're really practical, but the wash mats, they hold the water in, so you need to wear rubber boots when you're working in one of those. Uh, as always, well, actually not as always, we added a few things here. So we have the Cox reel that we had before, but our good friends at Obsessed Garage, we bought this shelf from them. It's designed to hold the Kranzler pressure washer. It does a great job. So now our pressure washer isn't on the floor anymore. Our hose reel isn't on the floor. We have a space for the uh, MTM gun. We have, of course, the Master Blaster with its rack. So we're ready to go there. We're trying to build a garage that is about as close to a dream garage as you can get. Yeah, and one that we're happy to work in as well. Uh, over here, we have our polishers hanging up. And yes, we have the cordless Milwaukee polishers. They're a lot of fun. We're working on those. We have our little uh, DA sander, which you know, a lot of people laughed at. But when they try it, they're like, hey, this actually works. And if you've never polished before, it just makes it a lot easier for you to polish. Uh, over here, of course, products, products and more products. Uh, we have a, a rack here for our, our brushes. We have the racks for the 16 ounce bottles. Now, the rack that we have for the brushes, you can also use it like this to hold bottles. So different ways of using it. We have a very important question from Fernando. It says, is the Kranzler pressure washer the best on the market. And I'm gonna get Ivan to chime in on this in just a second, but I also wanna chime in, so I'm gonna do a very magic trick here. And uh, okay, so when I was at SEMA 2022, I sat down with Matt Mormon from Obsessed Garage. Right. Really great conversation. And uh, we did an interview on the Hawk Pro Detailing channel, which is my YouTube channel. Yeah. But I asked him, I said, what is the best pressure washer for the money? And he said, the Kranzel hands down. He's like the AR and the Comet. Some of these have better GPM. Some of them have better PSI, but he's like, for the experience, I could have any pressure washer in the world. The Kranzla is the best. So yeah. Matt Mormon told me that. I believe him. He is sort of the pressure washer guru. Yeah. I think he has lots of thoughts, but well, I want to try it, it is a great pressure washer. And the one thing you have to consider is you can buy a cheap pressure washer that you'll pay $200 for, but you're going to keep buying it and buying it and buying it and buying it over time. Whereas the Kranzler, it's going to last you a lifetime. It's designed that way. And no, it may not have the highest G uh, not GSM, that's a towel. GPM. G gallons per minute. Yeah. It may not have the highest gallons per minute. It may not have the highest pressure. It has everything you need as a detailer. Okay, uh, my arm's getting tired. I'm going to turn this back around. Yeah. Sorry about the Movember mustache. We're about two weeks in. I know it's hard to look at. Yeah, and now your hand's in front of the screen. There we go. Oh, Time there back. he is. Big guy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I know you're pointing stuff out. Can we just talk about this wall? Because you and Sylvie, your wife, did some, some real magic yesterday. Uh, talk about this wall and, and how you got that paint Well, logo if you the remember wall. the last videos that we did in here, this was a black tarp. And behind that black tarp was a shelf. And you know me, shelves and detailing shops shouldn't exist. Why? 
they just accumulate crap. And literally, that's what it was. It was an accumulation of crap. So we got rid of the shelves, and that left a lot of holes in the wall. We patched those up, we repainted that. Uh, we just used a projector and a bit of tape, put the logo up there, and then added some red and black paint. There's a, there'll be a little short eventually on that. We have these nice stainless steel shelves to hold product. Now I'm not a shelf guy in a shop, but you know, we have to make it pleasing to the eye as well. So Wait. that's where these shelves come in place. Question, can I show, can I show them the magic on my phone here? The, yeah. The, um, okay. So let's go ahead and press play. This is Ivan. All right, so explain what you did here, Ivan. So projector, and then we're just taping it off. All the way around. So you're using green tape? We're using, uh, well, we had a two inch wide tape and a one inch wide tape. So the green tape is two inch and the uh, one inch tape is a, a whitish or beige standard masking tape. So I'm able to go, you know, do the circles and stuff with the one inch tape and the straight lines with the two inch tape. Why tape around it? Why not just use the projected image and start um, painting, painting? on it? Uh, it's too hard. And we had a little issue with the projector shutting off once in a while. So. Oh, so it switched on you? Yeah. So the green tape gives you the outline. Okay, and then you can, what's going on here? So we just cut off the, uh, that's when the projector died on us a couple times. But now we're just cleaning things up, making sure all the circles are proper and all of that. And then we start painting. So Sylvie did the red, I did the black. We ran around made sure everything was nice. And this is painted on brick, so there, uh, there was a little bleeding that happened. We'll have to take care of that with uh, touching up around the edges. From a distance, it looked great. Up close, eh, not so great. Removing the tape. See, I love how those letters all of a sudden look better once you get rid of the tape. So it yeah. allows you to be a little sloppy on the edge, right? Right. And not I, sloppy, just like, just that's yeah. the way it worked. And then I just repainted the, the wall. You'll notice up here, yeah, there I am. So there are two by fours that were nailed to the wall before. There you go. And now, but uh, Fernando asked, what's the ideal pressure to wash a car? We did a video about this recently and in post, I'll go ahead and add a, a card above here. But live, I'm gonna say, we found that 1200 foamed our incredible suds as good as you're gonna want. Exactly. Probably a little bit higher is ideal, but you know, your standard pressure washer is probably gonna have about 1200. Yeah, so 1000 to 1500 PSI is a nice range to be in. Now, Nick's arm is about to fall off his body, so let me take the camera for a second here. Feeling loose, feeling good. All right, you guys, I absolutely love this garage. Can you feel me coming alive, the energy? Uh, let's go through some of the product line. Why not, right? We've actually had this as a working shot today. I'm gonna show you our rinseless wash in 16 ounces. By the way, we're having a Black Friday sale right now, 30% off the entire website. Uh, we have gallons of rinseless wash, we have a 16 ouncer. If I'm in the Black Friday mood, I'm gonna buy myself a gallon and save 30%, free shipping over $49. It's a no-brainer to me. We have ceramic gloss, this is the gloss sauce. We love ceramic gloss, Ivan. And detail Are you in love with ceramic gloss? Yes, and detailing made simple. Great guy, Socrates, out of New York State, I believe. Yeah, he's awesome. Is yeah. he commenting? Yeah, he's just saying hi. So, uh, Ira Updike. Hi, Ivan and Nick. Nice so far in there. Uh, what's the outside temperature? Is it too cold to wash, even rinse us? It's below freezing today. So, yes, it is a little cold. Let me, yep. uh, oh, we have uh, Terry Michaels watching from Australia. What Terry. time is it in Australia there? I can kind of keep track of you. Okay, we're good. We're, we're so good. Still, we're right, still here. Sorry, oh, yeah. we had close a bit. Up. Extreme close up. Tripod we, issues. Yeah. Close your eyes. All right. We okay. had a, a bit of a an Ivan glitch there. Okay, we're good. I don't uh, think that's all the way. No, on. that that's good. That's it. Doesn't doesn't go there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Are we good? Okay, Everyone we're good. Right? We alive? We well? We're still alive. We're still alive. Can someone comment? Wait till someone comments, maybe, and I'll I'll continue to to yeah. blabber. Uh, so interior clean and protect, you guys. This is our most underrated product, right? It is sexy for incredible suds. And, and quick beads are water activated ceramic. Spray on, water beads, rinse off. Ceramic gloss, rinse us wash, I love it. But interior clean and protect, if you guys have not tried this stuff, it has more bite than you would expect from a two-in-one product and it leaves a nice finish behind. Yeah. And it just smells so nice. And to, ask, to answer your question, Nick's in Heber <laughs> City, Utah. 
Uh, right now we're in uh, Nebraska, that's the state. So it's like Ivan is the touring uh, musician and uh, I, I he never, doesn't know where he's going live. He goes out to the crowd. So we'll be able Cleveland. to read the questions on your, uh, on your phone. Okay, I'm reading questions. Ivan, uh, take it away, sir. So like Nick was saying, the interior clean protect, just a great product, lots of fun. Now we have a new one coming out. It's not out yet. We're still waiting on labels. This is a pre-production label, but the gold standard polish. Oh, oh my gosh. So, yeah, we uh, have a lot of questions okay. there. So Zcam says, thoughts on the Flex XCE 10.8. I know that the Flex Pixie yeah. is the three inch cordless polisher. PXE 80, that's phenomenal. Now, the XCE 10.8 is Zcam asking. I know that they're, um, they have two cordless polishers. Right. I believe the XFE is the DA and the XCE is their forced action, forced rotation. Yeah, it could be. I, unfortunately, I don't know. So I bought their forced rotation cordless and I think that's the XCE and I didn't like it. I've never used the, they called it the Beast, I think. Yeah. Was that Mike Phillips or Rennie Doyle? The forced rotation movement, I didn't love. I like a dual action polisher, which is mo most of the guys are learning on that. And so if it's the XCE, if it's the forced rotation cordless, I didn't care for it. I sent it back and I got the XFE, which is the cordless dual action. Can you explain what forced rotation is? So, because it's a really fascinating discussion. There was rotary, and then there was, wasn't it forced action in the middle, and then dual action came, like that was along the way, or? No, the forced action came after the, the initial DA. So a dual action or random orbital polisher or sander is basically, so you have your rotary, the pad just goes in a circle. If you have a, a normal free spinning DA, is the industry terms it, basically it oscillates and it turns at a slow rate of speed. The forced rotation, the rotational part of it is actually forced. So it's not dependent on the user to balance the tool and get it going right. It is 100% dependent on the, uh, the machine. So no matter what you're doing, the reason they call it the beast, you could literally stand on the machine and it would still rotate. So, and this is not to be confused with Flex. Our friends at Flex, by the way, make great stuff. Yeah. Um, we just happen to like the cordless, the, the Milwaukee cordless that goes with our red and black theme. But this is a dual action polisher. Right, so the backing plate is actually free spinning. Now, the dual action part of it means it goes around like this as well as spin. With a forced rotation, that spin is a constant speed and it's gear driven. That's the only difference between the two. This requires a little more finesse to use to keep that backing plate rotation. But the backing plate rotation isn't 100% necessary. It adds maybe 12 to 15% of cut to the machine. Good stuff. I wasn't really listening. I was looking at comments. I know. Yeah. Is that okay? Did you guys get that out there? Uh, Ryan L says, hi, Ivan and Nick. What's up, Ryan? Um, Terry Michael says, watching from Australia, and that it is 9.45 a.m. down under. Saturday morning. Um, Blake Whitney says, sweet shop, may I ask where in Utah you're located? So this is DIY Detail HQ in Nebraska, but Ivan and I recently built out, Ivan recently built out my shop in Utah. Uh, we're going to call it the, uh, the DIY Detail uh, Utah shop. I guess, yeah. Yeah. Nick's uh, man cave. Heaver City, Utah. So that's just uh, in Wasatch County there, about 20 minutes away from Park City. Um, uh, Ira says, still live. Very good. Uh, first from Puerto Rico says, what's up? Hello, hey, Humberto. Humberto. <laughs> uh, detailing made simple. What will your polish smell like since everything else has a great fragrance? Banana? I think it is banana. Well, let's open it up and find out. Hold on. Is this, is this label ready for prime time? Can no, the, the label is still a pre-production label, but... Okay. It's got a bit of a, a candy, like, bana like, candy banana smell. Like, you know the scent, but when people ask you to identify it, you got to take another whiff of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but it is going to be called... The gold standard. I love this label. I wish that we could have this out for you guys. Everyone's asking about the polish, the gold standard polish and the pad. Yeah. Let, let's just tease them a little bit. I'm gonna go get the pad. You can uh, showcase the, the compound and polish and make them want it. So this is definitely what we would call a one-step polish. It has no fillers in it, very important, and it has no protection. So it's not an all-in-one, but it's a one-step polish. And of course, the waffle pad. Why a waffle pad? Well, we've gone in, really in depth into that, but necessarily the waffle pad is all about having a cool surface. The cooler it is, the better the cut. 
and Nick's just playing around with camera angles and Because I can see like, myself on the phone. It's, yeah. very, it's very meta. Uh, <laughs> Lenny Palumbo says, I have a gas pressure washer, 2,900 PSI, 2.5 GPM, but can't get thick foam on a car. Is that too much power for the foam cannon? Uh, actually, yes. 2,900 PSI, that's a lot. That's a lot. The other thing is, it could be your foam cannon. Uh, we tested a lot of different foam cannons here, and we found that the MJJC mm -hmm. is by far the highest foaming. Uh, Our incredible mm -hmm. suds at one ounce will give you incredible suds. That is no joke. It is somewhat dependent upon your equipment and your foam cannon. Right. And there are guys out there who are running all the cool stuff, you know, and they've got the MJJC, and they're showing me and they're messaging me. They're like, really, one ounce does exactly what you said it is. It's not just marketing. So right. if you're not getting what you need, do you think it's more the MJJC or the pressure washer? Could be the foam cannon. Uh, if you're using that high of a flow rate and that high of a pressure, you want to make sure that in your foam cannon you have a 1.25 nozzle instead of the 1.1, or orifice is the word. One more time on that, I want to hear that again. So the higher the pressure in your pressure washer and the higher the volume, the higher you need the flow rate or the orifice that's inside of it. The MJJC comes with two, it comes with a 1.1 and a 1.25. The 1.25 is for higher flow rates. Okay. If you guys have any questions about that, write in the comments below. Very interesting comment from Gregor Aller. I was out doing rinseless washes in 36 degrees Fahrenheit today. Ooh. 40 degrees would feel warm. So yeah. early on in my mobile detailing career, I remember doing outside mobile detailing while it was snowing. And it was an interior job, but it was yeah. literally snowing outside. I had my steamer going, plugged into the outlet in the wall. Oh, you guys, if you're out there grinding, I'm with you. I hope yeah. I didn't mess with the audio, but it's hard work. No, um, it, kudos to you to be working in those temperatures. Really good question from Ryan L. Yeah. Will the interior ceramic adhere properly after using interior clean and protect? And the answer is that's the reverse order. Yeah. Now, after using interior clean and protect, if you did that and your customer or you decide all of a sudden, oh, wait, I want to protect it with interior ceramic, just give it a quick wipe down with a rinseless wash. The protection in interior clean and protect is very minimal. It's not designed, it's more of an anti-static product than anything else. And it has some UV protection in there. Oh, it definitely has a UV protection, but it, it's mostly for anti-static. So it's easy to remove with a quick wipe or rinseless wash, the protection aspect of it. But if you're planning on doing the interior ceramic, clean your interior with the, the rinseless wash instead. Yeah, I always tell people, if you wanna really get that interior ceramic base layer, the exact way that will give you the most durability. Just do a nice thorough clean on your interior, leather, vinyl, plastics. Even I carpet. Like, I, yeah, and, oh yeah, for sure the carpet. I was gonna get to that in a second. But then I like to use our panel prep, which may or may not be here. But panel prep is what I like to use as a final wipe down on my leather vinyl. You yeah. don't have to do it, but if you wanna go all the way down the rabbit hole, which a lot of you do, then I will apply the interior ceramic. Yeah, and I did, I, a, I did a training at Ryan's shop earlier this year. He's in Delaware. Beautiful shop. So if you're looking for a professional detailer in northern Delaware, give Ryan a call. Okay. Oh, Ryan, so the same one that commented. Yeah. Yeah. So I typically tell people, use interior ceramic, right? Prandle prep it first, use interior ceramic. And then you can do one of a couple things. Every time you detail, every other couple times you clean your interior, reapply interior ceramic because you get so much in that bottle like you can if you want or after you've done that base layer interior clean and protect as just yeah, a wipe definitely down. and you know especially on areas with a lot of frequent contact driver's seat driver's door console steering wheel every three to six months is a good regime the back seat the uh you know other areas where you're not touching too much it'll probably last a lifetime of the car but yeah but don't it's you a, don't it's you abrasion that I was like the Lincoln lawyer. I drove an hour each way. I had a full-time job for a while. And my, my car just got hammered. That's why I say, if you want to apply it as often as you want, it's oh, not going to hurt anything, no, right? Exactly. And, and abrasion breaks down any kind of coating. So if you're in your vehicle all the time for yeah. like, you know, 150 miles a day, it's going to be a different story than if it's, you know, 10 miles to work and back. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, someone out there appreciates my 
excessive attention to detail and overthinking Excellent. of things. Yeah. Excelsior Detailing. Yes. Andrew, right? Andrew St. Pierre. Good friend in uh, Warpotter, Canada. He's uh, near Windsor, Ontario. Just moved to a beautiful new shop. So speaking of new shops, uh, Andrew went from a shop much smaller than this. It was basically a one and a half car garage in the backyard to uh, more roughly, I think it's 5,000 square feet that he's in now. Proof that people can succeed as detailers out there. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And Andrew is very much a business owner. Uh, trying to turn detailers into entrepreneurs. That's your thing. I love yeah. it. So he says, how do you like the tiles on the floor? Do they work well for washing? What if your floor isn't level and water pools? So these are the Swiss tracks. And Andrew has a question a lot of people have about them. Right. So they're a great flooring system. They're hard on your knees if you're kneeling down, trust me. Uh, they work, they allow water to flow, but yes, if you do have a low area in your floor, it is gonna still puddle and pool there. And it'll get nice and smelly if stuff sits there for a while. Yeah, eventually, but I yeah. haven't noticed any of that here. Um, no, we have actually, this shop has uh, four perimeter floor drains. Uh, oh, is that underneath, why underneath here, so it, it's great. It's well set up for that. Uh, your shop in- uh, Utah. Utah, that's the state, yeah. So. Nick's shop has no drains whatsoever. So he'll be doing the squeegee thing a lot. I'm kind of wanting the Swiss tracks, trying to figure out if it's in the budget. I mean, it's not cheap, but it looks so good. It changes the whole visual dynamic of a shop. And I look online now, it's like when you get a car and then you notice every car on the road is that car. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I see a lot of people with Swiss tracks now, now that uh, you know we've had this in our shop and I've been you know, kind of window shopping for some in Utah. And it just, it changes the whole look. Yeah. It does. So it's very nice. I think it's worth it if you're a detailer. It is. Or is it? You're the business guy. I mean, is it, if you want it, it's worth it in your home garage. Is it worth it for the detailer? For the detailer, it depends on what you're doing. Uh, you know, a dedicated wash bay, I prefer polished concrete with the, um, you know, good drains. But if you don't have a drain available in your shop, then this to me is actually a better option than a wash mat because the wash mat uh, or you can put this inside a wash mat, which is even better. So you have the containment of the wash mat, but you're not walking around in puddles of water. Because the wash mat, definitely, your feet get wet. What is a wash mat if people don't know? So a wash mat is basically, think of a tarp with uh, edges on it that you can drive over. So you can drive over it, the edges pop back up, and then it's like a miniature, or it's like a really big but very shallow kid swimming pool. I was just thinking about his wisdom and uh, how I really want to beat him in this Black Friday sale because I really want to show that I, uh, I matter. You do. And it's the Incredible Suds versus the Rinses Watch Black Friday kit. Yeah, so Black Friday, uh, we're having a, first of all, we have two kits. They're roughly around $60 normally. They're on for $39.99, but we have an additional 30% off. So it brings it down to like 27 something. It's ridiculous. 27.97, I think. Yeah, it's a ridiculous, deal. Yeah, it's a ridiculous deal. But you get incredible suds, you get quick, quick beads, beads, a drying towel, and a wash mitt. No, you don't get one drying towel, Mr. You get driving. two. You get two. Yeah. And one of these will dry a whole car. They don't look it, but they're. Uh, they're they actually awesome. do. We, yeah, we did an F 150 today with one of these. Uh, the other, my wash kit is the rinseless wash, ceramic gloss, wash mitt, and two of these towels. So anyway, we're having a contest. Yeah. So every day we look at um, the kits that have been purchased and we talk a little trash to each other. Right now, I think Ivan's up. I'm about 15% ahead of Nick. Yes, and <laughs> let's, uh, let's change that around. So if yeah. you like a foam cannon, incredible suds, Nick kit, let's yeah. hit it. Um, Sam Squatch says, does DIY Detail have brushes for the wheelbarrows in the making or recommendations? That's a very good question. The answer is yes and yes and... So it's still sort of up in the air. We like have a wheel some. brush on yeah. the website, I believe. Uh, actually, a very good brush that's been around for decades. We're in talks with an American company called Braun, uh, and they make the wheel woolies. So do you like wheel woolies? If you do, leave us a comment. Because yeah. uh, I think, personally, I'm a fan of wheel woolies. They work great. The bristle-type brushes, they also work great. But every time you pull them out of the wheel, you get sprayed. So yeah. Yeah, indeed. It's not very fun. No. Um, Al Daly's saying hi to Umberto in Puerto Rico. And we've got Edward uh, Edgar Brown saying hi from Newfoundland. Hey! Nick and Ivan, love your videos. Appreciate you watching, man. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay. You ready for some shots fired? You ready to get mired in controversy? Oh, go for it. Let's get uh, controversial. 
Shane D says, how does your rinseless wash compare to PNS? Absolute. They're both great products. You know, they, they achieve a goal in a very different way. So our rinseless wash, very high in surfactants and very high in emulsification. PNS wash, and we have polymers in ours as well. PNS is absolute. Again, a great product. Dave did a great job developing it with the boys at the rag company, boys and girls uh, at the rag company. They're more polymer based. So the big difference between a polymer based and a surfactant based like ours, the polymer base has a little more in terms of slickness, you could say, but it leaves more on the surface. Ours leaves a cleaner surface, but no protection whatsoever, nothing there. It doesn't modify your LSP that you have on. So if your you have last step protection. Right, so if you have ceramic gloss on the surface per se, it's not gonna dull it down. Uh, if you have no protection on your vehicle and you use something like Absolute, it's gonna give you a little beating. So do they put protection in that? Do they advertise it's, that? No, it's, they're not advertising protection and it doesn't have protection per se, but because of the polymers, it leaves a, a little polymer on there that it's not gonna provide protection for years or even weeks, but it is gonna give a little bit of help to beating and help the vehicle stay cleaner longer. It's interesting because I have seen people comment and write to me that they think our rinseless is very slick. And so I believe in it. I think it cleans like a beast and I've seen the emulsifiers, and what they do is they hold the dirt in suspension. So they essentially encapsulate it so that when you're using your wash mitt, it's safe for the paint. Exactly. Uh, now, the, the bigger particles do get dropped to the bottom. They, you know, they get dropped like a stone. Bang. All the way to the bottom below the grit guard. Get a grit guard. Uh, but other than that, the, we, uh, our rinseless holds a little more in suspension than absolute. So there's drops a little bit more to the bottom. Right, but what's in suspension in ours is completely encapsulated. It's almost like a dye in the water as opposed to anything heavy. And you're kind of Mr. Rinseless. You've been teaching the rinseless washing method for years. We could have made this rinseless any way that we wanted to. Right. We had a lot of feedback. What did we want? And you know, we love our rinseless wash. I love the smell. I love what it does. It feels like it cleans so well. Why did we choose this particular chemistry? So one of the problems with the older chemistries of rinseless, and I've used Absolute a little bit, but I haven't, you know, don't, I didn't do a deep dive into it. I know it's a good product. Yeah, I don't, I'd rather spend more time thinking and talking about ours than right. no, but commenting when it, or yeah. criticizing, like that's not what we're here No, and I'm not criticizing Absolute at all. Like I said, it's a great product. Choose yeah. one, choose the other. You're, you're both gonna end up doing a good job. But what I wanted from our rinseless was a lot more cleaning power. And a lot of the older technology of rinseless, like I say, when it comes to oils, they don't do a good job. And your wash media, in some of them, comes out of the, the bucket just filthy. It never cleans the wash media. Ours does a great job of cleaning the wash media. You put it in there, as soon as you pull it out, perfectly clean. Uh, there's no issues with that whatsoever. And it's just the cleaning ability. And one thing that our chemist added in for fun uh, more teasing me than anything else, was he made it so we could foam it. And actually... <laughs> I've been in foam, it's funny. Yeah, but actually, it worked out great. So the foaming is a, a nice thing. He was able to incorporate polymers and surfactants and get it to foam, but not ball up and, you know, the polymer's going crazy inside the formulation. So uh, kudos to our, our, our uh, chemist. And he, what started off as a, a sick joke to me uh, worked out to be a great thing. Well, and this is DIY detail, right? And we're sort of humbled and surprised by how many detailers are actually really enjoying this. But as a product aimed at the enthusiast, we knew that foam is fun. And so we were like, all right, Ivan's Mr. Rinseless, but can we get something that foams as well? That was a conversation once it was brought up. Yeah. That we're like, okay, we can wrap our heads around a foaming Rinseless. That, yeah. yeah, so we're enjoying that. We're missing some comments here. Ryan L. Ooh, I love this question. Quick beads versus ceramic gloss. Protection, longevity, will using both have any benefit? And we've done a video, Ryan, where we actually, we wash the car, yep. and then we rinse it off, and then we do quick beads, let it dwell for 30 seconds, and then we rinse that off, right? All of a sudden you have the crazy beading, and you're gonna get that slick drying 
And then just for fun, we use ceramic gloss as the drying aid at the end. So you can do whatever you want, honestly. They're, they're right. different products. They're different products. Depends on how you're working. So if you're using a rinseless ceramic gloss is by far the better product because you're not rinsing it off. Uh, if you are doing the, the incredible suds, soap and water, you're rinsing it off, use quick beads. Uh, now you can use both. And we actually did a video earlier today that you will know, probably be a month before we get it published. But a video that we had done three or four months ago, we did a truck where we polished one door, yep. applied a ceramic coating. The other door, we just cleaned and applied a ceramic coating. And the front fender, we just cleaned and applied ceramic gloss. All four, all three sections are beating like new. Yeah, it's a little, you know, spoiler alert. It's the next video that I'm gonna work on editing, but we didn't pre-test this, do anything to it. I'm like, let's just see what's going on with these panels. Yeah. One of them was polished and coated. One of them was just washed and clayed and coated. And the other one was, was uh, ceramic gloss. Yeah. And all of them were like insane water beading. So it's cool to see these products like hold up. So if you've used ceramic gloss, comment below if you could. Let us know what you think about it. Um, one other thing that we didn't mention there, Ryan L, is that you can actually use quick beads as a drying aid. You don't have to use it as a water activated ceramic. But here are my thoughts on that. Quick beads is $10 more a bottle. Right. It's such an amazing thing to spray it on a panel uh, that's wet and then rinse it off and the beads come and it's just like a slick drying experience. That if I'm gonna use a dedicated drying aid, stick with ceramic gloss. Yeah. It smells awesome, the durability is insane, and it's actually about $10 cheaper for a bottle. Yeah. All these prices, by the way, are lower than what I'm saying because we have 30% off sale right now, so go get yourself some Black Friday deals. BF30. <laughs> BF30. But if this is after November 25th, 2022, sorry. Yeah, okay, Arc Eagle, Arch Eagle says, will you release a shampoo with higher pH, like Touchless Wash from Built Hamber? We talk about this all the time. So, yes and no. Uh, the, uh, the Touchless from Built Hammer is a sugar-based uh, cleaning product. Basically, if you want high pH, we have All Clean. You can use All Clean in the same fashion that you use that. And I believe they're advertising theirs as a pH of 13, which is incredibly high. That's actually higher than our APC. Yeah, that's like super clean high. Yeah, yeah and... Super that's... clean, not to denigrate any product. In fact, they're very well known. But I think they may even be a 14 on the pH scale. And when you get that high, you're, you're starting to enter the danger zone of, yeah, it can clean, but it can also damage the right. surface. Now, Although we don't want to disparage any brand no, and no. saying they're going to damage anything. But pH yeah. is a thing and it's worth talking about. Yeah, and Incredible Sides is a pH of eight and a half. So it's a little above neutral, does an incredible job of cleaning. So do we, do we, uh, are we going to go there? Probably not, because we don't see the need for it. And one thing that I've been loving, and I'm hearing it from people, is they're like, I'm so grateful to you guys for having a few products, and that one product does one thing. You don't have 18 different products for every use, right? It can no. get so confusing out there, and all the marketing hype is like, you should try Incredible Suds, guys. It is packed with real surfactants, no fillers, no sugars, none of that garbage. We've spent money to make this a product that was gonna work. And I say this yeah. over and over, so I'm not gonna hide it. We enter a market, right? The DIY, the enthusiast market. And if we don't have a kick butt snow foam. <laughs> a killer snow If foam. we don't have a killer snow foam that is gonna work and be visually fun and the whole nine yards, we don't have any business in the, in the enthusiast space, right? No. So this soap really works and cleans well. So the built hammer question is very interesting, but I'd like you, maybe someone out there should do a comparison video. Yeah. Built hammers high pH, pre-treat, whatever, versus our incredible suds. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many products out there, guys. We would just be so grateful if, like, you appreciate Ivan's wisdom and, and my expertise and enthusiasm, and you wanted to trust the source and, uh, and buy from us, that would be amazing. But, like, I'm not going to tell you, like, looking you right in the eye, that we're the only company that makes good detailing products. No. Because that's obviously not true. There's a lot of great companies. There's a lot of great companies, but we just love that you guys are supporting us so far. A premium fuel detailing says... How do you manage the overspray? Well, this is a good question for you because you love this product. How do you manage the overspray when using the Lake Country Pad Washer 4000 after cleaning out the pad? You love that pad washer. Yes, right? I do. <laughs> uh, I don't polish without it. If you're getting overspray, 
there's a few things happening. You're probably lifting your pad up a little too high or tilting it. It has that little lip around the edge and I've never had overspray. So, but I've been using the pad washer, the previous System 3000 and the, the System 2000 before that uh, for about 20 years now. So to me, using a pad washer is second nature. That being said, a lot of my students, when they first use the pad washer, there's a line across the room because they lift it up just a little too high. Basically, when you're spinning the pad out, you only need to have it lifted off the, the base plate, maybe an eighth of an inch. And uh, do you uh, put it on the pad washer on speed one, and then, and then when it's done with the agitation and you're just ready to spin it out, then is it on speed six? Or yeah. what speed do you usually use on that? Uh, well, it depends. If it's a rotary, speed one to clean, speed six to dry off. And if it's a DA, somewhere around two or three to clean, and again, speed six to dry it off. If your backing plate will spin on speed six, which I won't talk about the brand of machine that yeah. I just got that won't spin the pad on the Lake Country pad washer, I might be removing a, That's a washer, mod. washer mod. Yeah. Or do you remove the washer you mod? You add a washer. You add the washer mod. Or the Excel backing plate is pretty awesome yeah, for that too. exactly. It cuts like a beast. Um, the Sam Squatch says, thank you for helping us better ourselves as detailers and entrepreneurs. Hope everyone has a great holiday. Feel the same way. Uh, Arch Eagle says, thanks for your experiences. Appreciate you, man. Um, in Focus Photography says, my Black Friday order will be in tomorrow. I'm very excited for you. Yeah. As, a, as a human being, I always love getting products in the mail, especially detail products. Yeah. Like, it's just fun. Okay, so I have detailed with like, uh, oh, I don't want to name any names. Uh, uh, very economical, buy five gallon jugs of yeah. things for the same price as like a gallon somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it's like not as enjoyable and it's not as fast, it's not as efficient. No. Like I truly believe that you buy a product that works the first time. And I just got a note from, uh, or I talked to Caesar in New York. Caesar, yeah. if you're watching, what's up brother? And he was just like, I've bought all the big names. He's like, I've bought names that all of you know and everything out there. I don't want to name names. And he's like, yours? I just... I've started buying more and he's an enthusiast. He's like, because it just worked the first time. Yeah. And I love hearing this feedback, right? Because we love this stuff, but it just works. It smells good. It works. It yeah. saves you time. Whether you're a pro or an enthusiast, time is money. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, one flaw that this shop has is the heating system. Mm. And it's cold outside. The heating system is off because if it were on, you wouldn't hear us. So I'm going to go get a, a pullover like uh, Nick has here because the t-shirt's getting a little cool. Ivan Continue is a, uh, is a man who you'd think, okay, he's from Canada, he can handle the cold. Nothing could be farther from the truth. I'd say his Achilles heel is the cold. So if you ever want to take Ivan down, make him, make him freeze. Um, good question, good question from Chris. I know you recommend when possible to use an iron remover as a clay lube to save time. Is Meguiar's Iron Decon one of the ones you can use? And I don't know the answer to that question, but I do know that our iron remover has lubrication. I actually answered a question today when you're doing the rinseless method. What do you do? Do you just wipe it off after you use the iron remover because the iron remover has lubrication? It's like, no, I've done a video on that. I'll try to post it above. But if you're doing a rinseless wash method, after I have rinseless washed, I will have rinseless wash on the surface still. I've washed the car and then I'm going to spray my iron remover, yeah. and then I'm going to put a few sprays on my clay towel. Exactly. That's been sitting in my rinse's wash bucket, and then I'm gonna do my clay, right? But then you have iron uh, remover left on the paint. I just like to flush it with an IK sprayer full of rinseless, yeah. and then dry it maybe with a spray of ceramic cloth. That sounds very convoluted. It's really not once you're in the moment. So it does have lubrication, and it's very easy to do that uh, rinseless. But specific product question, is Meguiar's Iron Decon one that can be used uh, as an iron remover slash clay lube? Unfortunately, I've never tested it, so I can't answer that question. That being said, uh, give it a little try. One thing you can do is put a little on and then agitate it with a microfiber towel. If it starts sudsing up, there's a good chance that it has the, you know, the surfactants and lubrication in there. The other thing that you'll want to do is just on one little corner of your clay towel, put a drop and see what it does to the clay towel. If it doesn't damage the clay towel, then chances are you're good to go. Yeah, because the clay towel, one of the benefits is, you know, your clay bar might disintegrate with certain iron removers out there. And, and so the clay bar as well can be very aggressive on paint. I tell people, with the clay towel, it'll kind of last you forever. Yeah. As long <laughs> as you rinse out after every use, 
and you dry it clay side up. You just air dry it. Yeah. And, and it's meant to be lasting for a long time. Here, his microphone is aiming down. So let's see if we can improve the audio just a little bit. There we go. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. thanks, sir. Uh, Neil Walker, man. Thank you, Neil. He says, I bought a Black Friday box today. I did not use the code. I paid full shipping as a way of saying thank you. Neil, you didn't have to do that. No. I really appreciate it. Like, yeah. I want to give you the free shipping, but, but yeah. thank you. I, we are human beings, and so is the audience. And it's like, I just like to connect with y'all, like, person to person, and just say thank you. You know, like, the gratitude is real. Like, we get to sit here and talk about detailing products and like cleaning cars and make videos about it. Like I have, I'm like living the dream. So yeah, exactly. just grateful for everybody out there and we want to help. So, yeah. you know, my email address, nick at diydetail.com. We respond to every YouTube comment. I don't know how we're going to do that here other than verbally, but on every video that we publish, yeah, exactly. Ivan or I goes through and scrolls through. I'm the one with the emojis and the smiley faces and Ivan is the one with like just the subject, answer. verb, object, <laughs> yeah. you know? Uh, okay. Um, one other question that I have no idea if it's here, but I'm going to keep moving my mouth. Okay, detailing made simple. What's the highest, strongest dilution ratio for all clean for exterior? I know it says 15 to 1. Does 12 to 1 mean it's too strong? Especially for, say, tires and stripping waxes and sealants. If you're wanting to strip waxes and sealants, I would hazard and go 10 to 1, but you don't need to go stronger than that. Now, you can you know, put it on the car straight if you want to. You can do it three to one. You can do it five to one. There's really no need to go beyond 10 to one. It's just, just wasting say, product. Yeah, I would just say disclaimer. If you put on a strong you know, dose of all yeah. clean and in direct sunlight, like just use the dilutions recommended, but then use common sense informed by experience to meet the moment. One thing that I like to do, if I'm polishing a car in my professional detailing role, yeah. And I get overspray with like compound, right? Like I'm talking about heavy microfiber, rotary, you know, you kind of mess up a little bit and all of a sudden you got all this splatter everywhere. Yeah. And it stains the the trim like on the on the back of a truck. Yeah. You know. Um, sometimes the only thing that will remove that compound residue on that black trim is you just dab a little bit of straight all clean onto a microfiber towel and just rub it on there. So there's certain times when straight all clean works, but like yeah. not recommended, not for the DIYer, use the dilution ratios that we recommend. And then we're at about one to 30 dilution ratio for interiors, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but one to 10 is as strong as you're gonna need most of the time. Definitely. Okay, starting to get a little foggy. I think I need some of that Diet Coke or Coke Zero you got. Uh, I told you to drink something to drink. <laughs> Stani Toto says, do you plan to step into the European market Germany and UK are big on detailing. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Al Daly says, I got two boxes to give Nick a fighting chance at winning. Thank you, yeah. Al. <laughs> Woo! I'm going to get something to drink. Stani asked about the German and UK market. So, yes, we are uh, actively pursuing the uh, European and the UK markets. If you have a suggestion as to what uh, distributor you'd like to sell you our products in the UK and in Europe, please let us know and let them know that you'd like to have our products. That is a, a great way of doing it. And we're also making inroads into Australia, South Africa, uh, India, and the UAE. So we're, uh, we're branching out, we're trying to get there, shipping, all sorts of things, uh, getting commercial agreements in place, figuring all that stuff out, takes a bit of time. So uh, be patient with us, but we're getting there. Another thing that we're working on is Amazon. So Amazon is uh, another, another slow battle. Um, you know, we want to win the little battle so we can win the war. And Amazon, you can do it very poorly or you can do it very well. We're erring on the side of doing it well for you and for us. Because Amazon, uh, if it's not done correctly, it just becomes a, uh, a free-for-all and it's not good for anyone. I wanted to ask you, Ivan, as I walked over there and kind of changed the, sort of my physiology and now I've got you know my brain working again. What is like the most fun part of this journey for you? Because you've been part of other companies and, and uh, body shops and you've had a lot of chapters in your career. What, what's like the most fun for you now as we are building and growing uh, a new detailing company? 
It's to see the reactions from the people when they use the products. That's what I was gonna say. It's like yeah. hearing from people. That's my yeah, favorite exactly. part. You know, the, the comments that we're getting, uh, you know, 99% of the comments we get on these videos are positive, they're great, thank you very much. And those of you that have constructive criticism, thank you as well, because it has allowed us to improve. But it's that sense of community that we're getting, and also the fun, you know, what drew me to doing this and bringing Nick into this is, let's make detailing fun again. Yeah. And that's really what we're doing here. So. I think gave me a good tip, and I didn't take it personally, I was like, I love to hear that. So. I always clean the wheels in the videos. It's kind of a running joke, which maybe no one thinks is funny, but yeah. it's here we are, two guys in a garage. We, uh, we get like, sometimes we're in here for 12 hours a day filming content, yeah. so it get a little loopy. But I haven't talked about the wheel. Can you talk about the wheel method for cleaning, or I mean the, yeah. the, yeah. the, the clock method for cleaning wheels? I haven't just watched me clean a wheel. It's like, you know that's the shape of a, of a clock, right? Do you want to take it from there? So Nick would clean a wheel like this. <laughs> A little bit of brush there, a little bit of brush there, a little bit of brush there, a little bit of brush here, a little bit of brush there, a little bit of brush there, et cetera, et cetera. Uh -huh. I told Nick, why not make it easier on yourself and start at noon and work your way around the clock? Well, that's counterclockwise. Well, you can go clockwise or counterclockwise. Well, for me, it's clockwise. But anyways, uh, you know, work your way around the clock doing one segment at a time, making sure you do it right. So basically, it's just... Anything that you're doing in detailing, the more methodical you can make it, the more, not repetitive, but having a standard operating procedure and how you do things allows you to reduce the risks of causing damage, reduce the risk of missing a spot, and just makes it easier for you. And, you know, we're, DIY is about the do-it-yourselfer. So you're in the middle of detailing your car, and one of your kids comes up and says, hey, I need some help. Of course you're going to stop detailing the car. That is the lowest priority on the list. You're like this is the real world. This happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, or the phone rings or whatever. Or the neighbor stops by to talk. Yeah, exactly. And you're just like, come on, man. I'm, I'm in my zen mode. Do you see this like space that you've just entered? Okay, anyway. Yeah, but anyways, if you have sort of a standard operating procedure set up, even at home, washing your car, then you, when you do get distracted, you'll know when you come back to it exactly where you are. All right. Detailing made simple said copy. Thank you for that clarification. Okay, so Tug R, I like this comment. I've used both DIY rinseless and absolute. Just like pizza and burritos, there's room in your life for both. Exactly. Yeah, quality products all around. Yeah. Um, Shane D says, if you sell on Amazon, would we get prime shipping? That's a if and would. These are sort of like very hypotheticals right now. And, and those are the things we're working on to yeah. get that you know, from the get-go to be, you know, on Prime, to be distributed by Amazon instead of, you know, DBA versus DBV. So distributed by vendor, distributed by Amazon. There's a lot of work that goes in the background in doing Amazon properly, and we're doing our due diligence before any product gets on Amazon. We had a really interesting question on the DIY Detail Facebook page about, like, I can't believe that, you know, you charge $12.99 for shipping, like what a ripoff, like I'm just going to go and get on Amazon. And I was really respectful, I was like, right now we have free shipping over $49, which right. is about as good as it gets anywhere. And the shipping costs right now are real, like yeah. it's not meant to try to hurt anybody. It's like, if you pay for $49 or more product, you get free shipping. And a lot of places are like $99, yeah. you know, like this costs us money to ship. And, and especially, and then I wrote, well, we also have a 30% off sale. And they were like, well, you mean it's only during Black Friday? That I, it, was a, it was a very interesting conversation, but it's like, he's like, I'll just go to Amazon. Like, we want to be on Amazon. We're not like a, against no. that. It's just the logistics behind the scenes to do all this were like way more complicated than I thought. Yeah. But we're very much adapted in the real world to like meet the needs. It's just free shipping over $49 is still a pretty great deal. Yeah. I think. And you know, it's never free shipping. Uh, yeah. Nick, you had an experience. So last week I was in Utah building out Nick's shop and looking at a vacuum cleaner. Well, it was $20 more on Amazon than it was in a small mom and pop hardware store. Can you believe that? For the same, exact same vacuum cleaner. And the reason for that is shipping. Shipping is included, it's not free. Yeah, it's worth noting, you know, when you, uh, when you really look into it. Uh, really good question here, and Ryan L. asks it, and I think people are going to do this whether we tell them to or not, but I think it's a good conversation. Could you add some all clean to incredible suds for any benefit? I think I know what Ivan's going to say. I have some thoughts. 
Uh, benefit, yeah, maybe a little bit. If your car is extremely dirty, sure. Now what you could do is pre-foam on all clean and then wash. So instead of foaming on incredible suds, if you want to do that, foam your all clean on and then do the contact wash with incredible suds. Exactly. That's what I was going to say is detailers are actually PhD chemists. Oh yeah. They <laughs> Every detailer out there, including you, you've mixed everything under the sun and you know all about SiO2 and all the different nomenclature, the names of it. It's like people are going to do what they're going to do. Foaming, all clean, yeah. as your pre-treat, spraying it off with a pressure washer, and then doing your contact wash is a phenomenal way to do the process. Yeah. It's just sort of a, do you want to use one soap that smells awesome, keep your life simple, or do you want to get more down the rabbit hole? And that's kind of what professionals yeah. end up doing. Like as a pro, I prefer sometimes to just all-purpose cleaner in a foam cannon, knock everything down with a pressure washer, and yeah. then do my contact wash. Exactly. Quick and dirty, gets it done. Not as fun. No. Not as fun. So, I mean, you could do whatever you want out there. It's not yeah. going to hurt anything. No, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Thoughts? No. Ideas? No, Concerns? good. Um, Ryan L said, oh, we're, Ryan, you're getting a lot of airtime here. Shipping <laughs> cost is real. My pad washer 3000 broke in the middle of a job. They wanted 200 to overnight a new one. That was not us, by the way. We don't sell that. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <clears throat> detailing made simple says, PhD chemist. Um, Edward, Edgar Brown says, do you ship to Canada? And Edgar, we have Carzilla in Canada. Yeah, so Carzilla.ca is our distributor in Canada. Speaking of distributors, we also have IDS Car Care in Florida and um, Jorge, but I forget his company is name. Is JRJF? JF uh, Detail Supply in Puerto Rico. We got to get this right because... We appreciate his support so much. Yeah. Um, in focus photography, I think I remember what he said. He said that uh, he's tried every product so far, uh, really likes them. Rinseless yeah. is his favorite, which I'm guessing is your favorite as well. Yeah. Are you just going to be silent while I scroll here? No, exactly. JF Detailing Supply in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Uh, and it's Jorge, right? Yeah. So if you're in Puerto Rico, we got you. If you're in Canada, we got you. Yeah. If you're in the United States, IDS Car Care or um, obviously DIYDetail.com. Exactly. Uh, man, the people who have trusted us as distributors and then the customers who have trusted us, I'm just I'm yeah. so grateful. Um, Neil Walker says, yep, yep, Umberto says uh, JF Detailing Supply. Neil Walker says, I cleaned eight-year-old chrome-faced wheels and the barrels were in bad shape. I used Meguiar's wheel brightener to get the job done. Do you have an acid wheel cleaner in the pipeline? No, uh, we don't. Uh, an acid wheel cleaner is definitely a pro product. There are a lot of places where it's actually illegal to use. So no, we're not gonna go down that road. I'm just gonna keep that awkward silence going while Yeah, I'm okay, here. well, no, uh, acid wheel cleaners, they do work. They are quite dangerous, not necessarily for the vehicle, they're dangerous for the person using them. And as we're aimed at the DIY enthusiast, we don't want to put anyone in danger. How could I have ignored John Wisenant? John, my guy, the first customer to buy something from us. Oh, wow. Literally the first, per like, we start this company, this yeah. is our lives, you know, we're, we're putting everything into it. And the first person to go online, put the credit card number in there and order product from us was John. And I'm sorry I missed your comment, John. You're the man. What is best to use to get bugs off the front of the car with the rinseless wash? Interesting question. So the rinseless wash itself, uh, just giving you a little more time. So you can actually use an IK foamer, foam on the rinseless wash on the front of the vehicle. Should we do that on you and do a demo? No, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> but foam it on, let it sit, wash the rest of the vehicle, come back around to the front. Now, you can use... Um, I'll be right back. BRB. Yeah. Yep. We don't sell these, but they're available just about everywhere. These bug sponges that, when they're dry, feel like a brick. Uh, they're actually quite, uh, quite useful for that. But Nick has gone to get something even better. Don't use that. Here's what you're going to do. Yeah. You're going to foam a rinseless wash. Or, here's my preferred method, out of direct sunlight if possible. Foam all clean. Yeah. And after you've let the all clean dwell, right. preferably before it dries on the paint, you don't really want yeah. that, then you're going to come in with your clay well, towel, no. 
uh, you're gonna you're gonna come all, in. all clean is not really compatible with the clay towel. So okay, it's gonna hold break on. it down over time. Okay, here's I, I'm like getting a little loopy. Yeah. You foam mm -hmm. the all clean, and then you and then you flush the panel with the rinseless. Exactly. Okay, so you've let the all clean do the work. I have a video about it where I did it the right way. Yeah. You foam the panel with all clean, and then you flush it with the rinseless wash. Exactly. So the all clean's gone. All you've got left are the polymers from the rinseless. At that point, I would actually wash it. Yeah. First, and see what comes off the least abrasive way. Yeah. And then after that, I'm gonna use rinseless a little bit more and my clay towel. And that once you had the all clean and the rinseless and the yeah. wash, clay towel at the end. Exactly. I'm getting loopy, Ivan. Yeah. You know, these young kids, they have no stamina. I'm just not drinking enough Coca-Cola Zero. I gave up caffeine when I got COVID trying to yeah. get my life together. Uh, there was another question about how long our ceramic coating is rated to last. How long do you want it to last? Uh, and that's actually true. So if you use ceramic gloss as a drying aid, let's say once every six months, that coating will last you a lifetime. Uh, technically speaking, it's a three-year coating. The coating industry is always, always caught up on how long is it gonna last? Well, how long it lasts really depends on how you maintain your vehicle. If you're an enthusiast, you wash your car on a regular basis, it's gonna last you a very long time. If you abuse your vehicle, if you're parking in an industrial zone, if you're driving it uh, you know, 100,000 miles a year, yeah, it may not last three years. If it's a garage queen, it's gonna last forever. Someone asked, can I use ceramic gloss on my car if it's not ceramic coated? Like, yes. Yes, and it makes me realize, like, as pros, we know all these things and go down so many rabbit holes. Well, we're holes. PhD chemists. We're yeah. PhD <laughs> chemists, right? So are you out there. But some people are, like, very... Now, I'm not going to say new or inexperienced, just like you're on your journey and you know what you know right now until you know more and then someone else will know about what you knew yesterday. Like, yeah, and those questions don't know, are great. They're great questions, right? Like, I don't know all, this, all these names yeah. and terms. No, if you don't have a ceramic coating on your car, you wash the car and you use ceramic gloss as a drying aid. Yeah, it adds protection, yeah. lubrication, shine. No, you do not need to be ceramic coated to use that. And, you know, one other thing, we have a Facebook group DIY detail, look it up on Facebook. There's 47, 48,000 members so far. It's a safe haven for asking questions. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, Bono Wynn says, hey, Nick and Ivan, loving every product in the DIY line. Even though I just placed an order not too long ago, I'm going to order some more. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, and then Brad Clark. Well, I like that name. Yeah. You know, Nick McGurk. Brad Clark. Yeah. I think it's the K at the end. It's like yeah. a strong name. <laughs> Brad says, I just want to do a quick shout out. I'm starting a detailing side hustle. Came across DIY Detail. I love the variety of products you offer and value. Thanks, Brad. Yeah. Are these bots out there that we're paying for no, these no, comments? No, no. Are these no. real people? Yeah, real, real people. people. Okay. And, uh, you know, when you're starting your little uh, side business, remember to keep work life balance in check. That's an important thing. A lot of people will start a side hustle and it takes over their life. You still need to relax. You still need to have time with friends and family. So uh, it's a hard thing, though, because it took it over my life. It is, yeah. And it's like because no one else is going to birth this and grow it, and nobody else is going to uh, answer those phone calls and get those jobs for you. And then it, it becomes very emotional, where someone wants to pay you for your time and your expertise and what you do, and you don't want to say no ever. And you're like, well, how am I going to grow if I don't say yes to this work? So, like, what advice do you have specifically to that? Because I lived it, and I can't tell you that I made mistakes, even though I did, I can't tell you that I regret it because I'm sitting here with Ivan right now. Mm -hmm. And I grinded so hard, and it did cost me a lot of my personal life, but here we are, and I've grown so much, and it's like, it was really hard, but I'm here. Yeah, exactly. And I learned a lot of those lessons, and it's like, would I do it the same way again? No, I would make more time for my family, Yeah, because they needed me around. And I'm around now, but like, exactly. I learned all these lessons, so how do you balance it all, right? Because you gotta pay money for your pressure washer, and your pad and your tools and your detailing chemicals and, and you gotta get the word out and, and yet you're working a full-time job, maybe you have a family, like how do you balance out of the side hustle? Uh, you have to be very efficient, first mm, of all. That's a good point. So efficiency is a great thing. Uh, work on standard operating procedures. Work on being as efficient as you can be. As a hobby, if we spend five, 10, 15 hours cleaning our car, that's fine, it's a hobby. If you're doing it to make a living, you wanna be as as quick and as efficient and as high quality as possible. And efficiency actually breeds quality. The more efficient you are, the more standard operating procedures you have, the less you're gonna miss, 
the better job you're going to do. Hence the clock, even with the wheel, just going yeah. one direction. Uh, cars with Keeve. I'm a bot. DIY details, good stuff, LOL. Uh, appreciate you, man. You did some videos. Go follow Cars with K-E-A-V. Yeah. I love your channel, man. And if it's you like... like if you like foam cannons, he's your man. Uh, I, he actually has a system of rating foam cannons. No, like legit, like yeah. there are YouTube channels out there. And he's done a great there, job, yeah. And you kind of look at him like, okay, this person does it. But expertise, like true, if you're trying to figure out yeah. what's good and why, I can just see the way your mind works, man. It's very, uh, it's different than mine, but yeah. it's, it's very informative for exactly. sure. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And entertaining. And fun, yeah. It's a BMW, right? Yes, yeah. that he has wrapped. It's really cool. It's like green. Is it green? It's blue now. Blue. But I think he changes the wrap. Okay. Okay. Frequently. It's a great channel, guys. Yeah. Um, Brad Clark purchased Ivan's Black Friday kit. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Ivan takes the lead. <laughs> Ivan takes the lead. Hey, Skull says I'm here to show my support to both of you and the continued success of DIY Detail as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, Skull. Appreciate it. Um, oh, so Ryan L says, will there be a DIY booth at Mobile Tech Expo? We, we don't, don't know, know yet. <laughs> we don't know yet. But are we ready to talk about our program? Well, we're actually developing a program to help detailers uh, with their customer service, with their clientele, and with their maintenance. So in other words, selling DIY detail products to your customers. So if you're a professional detailer, we want you to have access to this, that you can make a little bit of profit with it, you can have fun, and also you know that your customers are going to be maintaining their ceramic coated cars or their cars that they just had detailed with good quality products that are backed by education. So this channel, if someone buys any of the, any of the products, there's a QR code on here. QR code, first of all, brings you to the SDS sheets, very important. But secondly, it brings you to the YouTube channel where you have all these videos. So the whole goal of this program that we're working on is for detailers to be able to either buy products or do a dropship program and sort of like an affiliate link but they would get a commission they can offer a discount to the customers at our store and do it from there so if it's something that interests you reach out to us but we're not quite 100 percent there yet we're still working out some of the logistics but eventually it's going to be a program that uh, we should have a lot of fun with. Yeah, and it would offer something along the lines of wholesale pricing to real detailing businesses and a way for you to meet your customers' needs. And then because we would drop ship, you won't have to carry like you know, $1,000 of inventory in your shop. We know that it's, it's tough. Sometimes you're on a shoestring budget uh, trying to make everything work. You probably have, what, the lineup in the, in the shop. You can at least show it to the customer. Yeah. Or whatever, but and there's so much online now with the YouTube and the Instagram and the TikTok that that you can show your customer, hey, this is really legit. Look at all the educational content, and they're gonna be in good hands when after you've spent 20 hours paint correcting their yeah. car or whatever, you give them that that uh, you can drop ship them that that uh, wash kit. So yeah, it's kind of a work in progress. I mean, we're kind of like finalizing it, but it's not final. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're getting there. So, but we we envisioned uh, unveiling that at MTE. Right. It's not that far away. We need to figure that out. Uh, Carolina's Auto Detailing says, guys, thank you for all you do. Excellent content for the past years. Awesome products. I'm slowly transitioning into my business. Uh, thanks, Carolina's Auto Detailing. Do, yeah. you, do you have a name? I'm assuming you do. Uh, Armando Ontivero says, DIY Detail Class. Ooh, DIY Detail Academy. I can see it now. Yeah. We're going to be doing some training with Ivan. I know it's... Oh, yes. It's like, I could just envision... But how big would y'all want the training class to be? Like, comment in the comments below how big you'd want it. Ivan, you know training. What are the benefits of small versus a large class? And then especially with the idea of, like, a more enthusiast, you know, versus a professional crowd, what, what yeah. do you think would be ideal for a DIY detail training? Well, for me, a training, I love hands-on. Uh, sitting people down in the classroom and just lecturing to them, first of all, I'll fall asleep. But secondly, it's not the, the best, to me, it's not the best way of teaching. Uh, I like a hands-on approach. So a class that's way too big, the largest class I did was in Poland, had 50 students. It was a little big. Yeah. Uh, I like a, a 10 to 15 person class size. That to me is a nice class size. Uh, it allows for questions. So if you have too small of a class, it's great, you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher, but sometimes you're there and you don't think of that question that you should have asked. 
Well, the more minds you have, the more questions you have. We did a all you a need is your one. Class. All you need is one Nick McGurk, though. It doesn't matter how big the class <laughs> is. When I went to the Rupes training in Longmont, Colorado, probably like four years ago, yeah, everyone just groaned. And like some people, like the cool kids in the class who like you know spitball and throw gum from the back row, were starting to like make fun of me. Because yeah. I went to an advanced paint correction sanding class and I've been in business for two months, so I really yeah. didn't know what I was talking about. But I asked questions all the time. And afterwards, Jason Rose came up and he actually thanked me. He's like, those were really good questions. Right. So those are questions that people are too cool to ask that people have. And I think that's been good for me as a detailing channel is like I ask all the questions, mostly to you, mostly yeah. to myself, but then I can make videos about them. It's like people have these questions. Sometimes you think they're too stupid or you like... There's you're, no you're, such thing as a stupid exactly. question. Exactly. So um, I love the idea of more people, higher chance that, that you're going to get questions out of different brains and all exactly, that. Exactly, yeah. Because um, you're always learning every day, even when you're Ivan, right? Like, oh, definitely. No, that? it's what I really love about the detailing industry is that it's always evolving. It's always getting better. There's always something to learn. And I've been in the industry almost 43 years now. I'm still learning every day. And that, to me, is my passion. So, yeah. I uh, love this comment. Um, well, I want to answer Shane's question. Mm, I'm going to do a positive and then a challenging question. Okay. If you're ready for that. Dean underscore two says, ceramic gloss is the truth. Love that product as a drying aid. Beads for days and super glossy. I think beads for days, like something for days is, yeah. a, is a saying. Oh, okay. Because it beads for months. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. like, but it's like gloss for days. Bro. Yeah, it just goes on. I yeah. think I'm trying to translate slang, but I think that means I'm old too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it does beat for a while. Thank you for supporting ceramic gloss. I always tell people ceramic gloss is the product as a pro that I would first try because there's just so much value in that. You can yeah. use it as a drying aid. You can sell it, upsell it as a, you know, a ceramic sealant with three to six months of protection. It just lasts great. And the water beading is awesome on windshields too. Yes. When, you're, when you've like ceramic lost your car, you know, three months ago yeah. and it's still beading and you're driving through the rain, you're like, wait, that was a $15 product? Anyway. Yeah. Um, it's great. Now here is the, uh, that's not a challenging question. Shane D says, why does quick beads need to sit for 30 seconds versus the competition spray on rinse off products being instant? We wanted to give you time to work. That is the reason. Now, it doesn't have to sit for 30 seconds. We recommend 30 seconds. If you want to spray it on and rinse it off immediately, you can. And it will water bead. It, 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 it's, it literally will work. Yeah. But we, uh, you know, we wanted to give you like a 30 second to two minute window just for safety's sake. Uh, because you are going to get overspray. If you're working outside, especially a mobile detailer, or you're at home in your driveway, you're spraying it on, there's a bit of wind. If you're spraying it on the front fender, and that wind is carrying it all the way down the car to the back fender, you want to have time to get there before it causes streaking and issues like that. So we just wanted to make it act a little slower to make it easier and safer. Oh, Ivan's going to love this one. Number one. Yes. Any plans to release a traditional wax? And I would say we're always exploring, doing research, product developing. So I would say... Yeah, there's a chance we will, but uh, you can uh, yeah. uh, chime in. The second part of this, and I know you're going to love this, is same commenter, Skull says, my preference is the warmth of traditional wax over the coldness of ceramic. Right. Uh, yes, actually, we are working on a traditional wax, but it is going to be a little while. Uh, product development is not as simple as a lot of people think it is. Uh, it's generally about a one-year process. Well, and the reason we're doing it this way a lot of people think, what, are you just relabeling someone else's and adding a scent? It's like, no. <laughs> Everything that we make... It's ground up. It's ground up. We want to make our own original chemistry and offer you a unique brand. Otherwise, like, we don't need to start a company and just relabel others. Like, that's no. not... We're not... Our integrity is that... That's not us. This is yeah. us trying to formulate something with the chemist to deliver. Right. And so, yes, we are working on a wax. It is taking time. Every time we do a scent or a fragrance or a color change, that means another three months. Uh, and sometimes we'll do a fragrance and it just causes the, causes the formulation to separate. It's not gonna separate in the first day, the first week or the first month. We let it go three months on the shelf just to make sure that we don't have any issues. And as far as the warmth of a wax, yes. The wax, it's not necessarily a warmth, but the wax fills. So you're getting a little bit of thickness to it 
and you're filling all those very micro imperfections that does give you that glow or warmth that you're used to having. Yeah, but you talk about how there's this perception that, that wax is warm and coatings are cold. There and is. the story yeah. that Ivan will, will point out is he'll have people at his classes it's a blind test, right? Yeah, so, so people I, don't get to know which one is which. No, so at a at a, a class, and I used to do this in the past, but I drive around in a bus now, so I don't have rental cars. I take my rental car, and I would literally just put one product on the whole car, whether it be a sealant or wax, whatever, whatever I had on hand close by, and then you know you have the <laughs> the description of the rental car there that has all the panels, and I put. 10 different waxes and sealants written down on one side and then on the other side the numbers for the panels and get everyone to match it up and I'd have people, detailers, professional detailers out there arguing looking at the hood and the fender and going no no this hood has to be a wax because look it has more glow and you can see the metallic pop a little more on this fender than you do on the wax and they'd go through this whole rigmarole and they convince each other that this this panel had this and this panel had that and this was a ceramic and this was a wax and in reality it was all the same thing and occasionally in a class I'd have one person that would write yeah it's all the same or I can't see the difference yeah and that person was the one that was right so we do create a lot of um, perceptions and you know our mind allows us to see things that may or may not be there I still claim that you're right on that, that a wax is warm and a coating can offer a little bit more of a, a sort candy of a apple. cold, glassy, mirror kind of finish. Yeah. But I don't know if I'm right. It might be just I'll perception. have to do a blind test with you one day. Uh, Eric Anderson, uh, yeah, Average Joe says true customers especially can't tell. That's true. Um, I don't know what tactical officer said. Nick Griot's the second LOLOL. Is Nick Griot, is Griot's, is there a guy named Nick in the Griot's family? You guys can comment below. I have no idea. My name is Nick. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Eric Anderson says, hello, Nick. If the rinseless wash freezes during shipping, can it be reconstituted? Here in Park City, it is below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and the delivery sits outside for hours. That's a good question, Eric. I mean, I, I've detailed mobile in Park City and uh, lived in Heber and would take all my chemicals outside yeah. of my car put them right inside the mud room, you know, which was like, come on, man, I got my steamer and my extractor yeah. <laughs> and everything I would like, it would take me a half an hour to lug all this in so it didn't freeze overnight. The products still work. I mean, they would freeze in my car sometimes and they would still work. Do you yeah. have a scientific explanation? Obviously you don't so want your products to we've freeze. We've tested all our products to freeze. They, they will withstand freezing. They won't, re re sorry. they won't withstand repetitive freezing. That's the issue. So freezing once or twice during shipping, not that big a deal. But repetitive freezing, those, the cycling of freezing and, un, and thawing, that is the issue. But otherwise, let's say a, a bottle or a, a gallon of, of rinseless wash sits in your garage, say, and it doesn't freeze. Like, how long, someone asked me, like, well, will this last me a year? Yeah. Yeah, like, I don't, our products don't really expire. No. I don't know how to tell you it'll last four years without four years from now us proving that it still works. No, our, uh, you know, all of these have been tested for one year minimum uh, in terms of durability, things like that, and shelf stability, so we're good there. But uh, yeah, it's basically products don't really go, detailing products, whether it be ours or someone else's, as long as the bottle is sealed you're, you know, and resealed after you've opened it, not an issue. I was talking to a friend in the carpet cleaning industry and they have a hydrogen peroxide based cleaner and he said that is one of the products because of the instability of the peroxide, not a chemist, not a PhD chemist, yeah, yeah. but that it's about a year after, after they blend everything or, right. or make it that uh, shelf life stability, something with the peroxide, not that it's going to blow up, not that it's not going to work, just the peroxide, the brightening part of that particular carpet cleaning product. Yeah is just gonna stop working as well. Exactly. So things do happen over time. Oh but yeah. But like, your detail products are gonna be fine. Yeah, like, but it don't- It will still work. Yeah, but don't, you know, don't stock up on uh, 80 years worth of product either. Oh, Average Joe says, or no, Wade says video froze. So we could be low on battery here, folks. I, uh, they say audio is fine, but video froze, and that's because we are on a low battery sign. 
Ivan's back. Um, we're at 20% battery, Ivan. Uh, okay. And said uh, uh, that... Uh, I just had to press OK on oh, okay, yeah. and everything's so, fine. And we've been going on for, what, close to an hour now? We have more people. We have 50 people on here. Wow, excellent. We're rocking and rolling. So the, the only have you problem got, is... Have you guys seen the Movember mustache? What do you think? The Maybe only... I'm self-conscious. I've never grown a mustache. If you guys don't know this about me, I keep interrupting Ivan. Is I worked as a TV news reporter and anchor for 14 years, and I would never, ever have been allowed to grow a mustache. Never. Like, no way is he going to go on the news like, not this guy anyway. Yeah. And uh, so I just went for it this November, and so far, it's, uh, it's, it's there. Actually, it's turning out better. The first couple of days, it was like, hey, you've got some fuzz above your lip. But what did, you said, what did you say? Like it, it's doing a disservice to mustaches everywhere. <laughs> exactly. Or like yeah. that? But now it's you know it's filling in. It's looking better. It's looking better. Uh, okay. Will Overkill says, and I don't know if it's a compliment or, or a criticism, but we're just gonna read it. Purchase the rinse list for my first DIY product. Is it always mixed to two fifty six to one, or does it become anything like a stronger cleaner or detailer at stronger mixtures? like other rinseless products. Yeah, you can vary the mixture a little bit. So for general washing interiors, everything, 256 to one is the, you know, the great way to go. If you wanna do it as a spray and wipe, which it isn't the ideal product for that, and no rinseless is. But people have, you know, we, we joke about a lot of professional detailers being PhD chemists, People try different things, then they put it online, and hey, I used it at this dilution, and it worked great for that. And then sometimes the companies adopt that uh, mentality. Like, oh, that people like it like that, let's put it on the label. Yeah, like, exactly. So, quick detailer, clay loop. I mean, you can use them all. Like, you can use it like that. You can. Personally, I've only ever used a, you know, especially in a professional setting, 256 to 1. So half an ounce to a gallon, four milliliters to a liter. That's all you ever need. You don't need to add more to make it a, a better clay lube. It's not going to affect anything. When we're in the shop, Ivan will mix it like exactly one ounce mm -hmm. to two gallons. Yeah. Right? Like, and if I put too much in, he'll say that's too much product. But when Ivan's not looking, man, I'm like dumping like four ounces of rinseless <laughs> in there. Because I just, I'm a more is better guy. But he is right. I just have fun with it. Yeah, exactly. So, like I'm telling you, you really, you can't go wrong. No. You're not going to hurt the paint if you over dilute for a clay lube. No, the only issues you can have is in the drying aspect, you might get a bit of streaking if you have yeah, too yeah. much product in it. Absolutely, there. especially on windows, you might notice that. Yeah. But the cleaning power is great. And, oh yeah. And the polymer streaks are like super easy to wipe off. Yeah. It's not like, oh my gosh, I can't get this compound off the trim no, part. Exactly. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's wipe off. Um, okay. Brian Vlog said, just order both Black Friday bundles. Get your bundle before it goes back to the normal price. Brian appreciates you supporting the Nick Suds kit. And the Ivan Rinsel <laughs> And the I think he's still winning. Yeah. But actually, we're all winners. Hey, exactly. by the way, these, these kits, there's the Nick kit and the Ivan kit, Rinseless, and then the Suds kit. Uh, you get entered into, if you buy one, and each entry is, every purchase is an entry, into a $250 gift card yeah. when, the, when the sale's over. Exactly. So, so you get $250 so worth of DIY detail products shipped to your door. Um, yeah, school says tip if you don't have temp control in garage, store products in your house. Yeah. And now we have a chemist named Ryan L says peroxide is H3O. After a time, it turns to H2O, aka water. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that's how that works. Uh, Matt McKay says congrats, fellas, on all the YouTube reviews of DIY. They've been overwhelmingly positive. positive so thanks, yeah, Matt. Thank you. Uh, Carolina's Auto Detailing says I have used one cap full of incredible suds. In my Mac Shine foam cannon, I watched two large. I washed two large F250 pickup trucks and two Toyota SUVs, and still 200 milliliters left in the cannon. Excellent product goes a long way. Yeah, thank you. And one capful is only half an ounce. That's what I love hearing. Is like it's not hype online to make mm -hmm. it look good on a YouTube video. Like incredible suds. If you've never tried our lineup, is the product to try because it will convert you. And then ceramic gloss, I think, for pros is the first product I want you to try because yeah. we're talking about efficiency. We're talking about making a living. Right. That product is fantastic. Yeah. It does exactly what you need it to do. And those of you that are into calculating panel impact ratio, one cap full to a full 32 ounce or one liter foam cannon is a panel impact ratio of one sixth of 1%. 
No one cares about panel impact ratio, Evan. In the UK, they do. Trust I know, me. I know. Yeah. You, you're going to make it a thing. I know you already say they no, no. talked about it, but what, what you are really saying is you don't need much of our product. No, exactly. Uh, I have incredible suds. Okay, Matt McKay, looking forward to getting the waffle cup pads when they're available. So are we. So are we, <laughs> Lake Country Manufacturing. Uh, oh, get Ivan to market some beard balm and oil. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, uh, this is all natural. So okay. No beard balm or oil uh, involved. Oh, man, this is a good question. Teddy Mutter Pearl says, how did you both find each other and decide to launch a business together? It's a good question. So I started out as a mobile detailer, and I watched a lot of videos of Ivan online. You know, early on, he was... Uh, with another company, and so he was one of these guys that I saw as a, you know, an influencer, but more than that, uh, a trainer and a teacher and an educator, someone that you watch to learn from. So I start with the mobile detailing business, I start the YouTube channel on the side, and I'm just all passion. I'm buying all the cool stuff, I'm trying the entire lineup of every product line out there, and I'm grinding for a year, and like many of you out there, if you do quality work, people are going to tell their friends. It's harder to run a more profitable business later on. It's easier to give away your time and do it cheaply early and get more work. And getting tons of work and being busy feels like winning, and it feels like you're doing good, but when you're busy, you're not always profitable, right? Exactly. You know that trap where... You know, Joan tells her friend uh, Amy that Nick is good, and, and he'll, he'll do it for a hundred dollars. Yeah. Of course, she'll hire me for a hundred bucks, but it took me eight hours, and I used twenty bucks in product, and it's like, yeah. Did I make money that day? No. But anyway, I digress. So full of passion, and then about a year in, I become an installer with the company you're with as a professional ceramic coating installer. And I think it was two years into my business, probably less than that. I started in October of 17. Yeah. And I basically had enough of a YouTube following that I started asking around. And some of the viewers agreed to come to a training at my shop. So I asked you. Yeah. We talked about details of what it would cost to have you come to my shop in Heber to train people. And I was able to get them very easily based on some viewers who wanted to come. And I don't remember, was that uh, uh, fall of 19 when you came to my shop in Heber? No, I think 2018. 2018. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, it was either a year or two years after I started yeah. my business, you came to the shop. Right. And from there, you know, that person-to-person -person connection, you never know what a training or what a conference will do for your career or your friendships. Like, uh, I heard someone say proximity is everything. Yes. Right? Like, go get that internship unpaid if you're 18 and you're just graduating high school, even though you need to make money. Well, then go work a night job. But getting in the door somewhere and having face-to-face -face contact with people can change everything. So once we finally met in person, I think that sparked a friendship and yeah. a genuine like, uh, enthusiasm about you know, each other. I think you saw my potential Definitely, as yeah. like an enthusiastic on-camera presenter of detailing. And we sort of stayed in touch after that. We did videos. And um, maybe you could talk about sort of the evolution of, of how we got to this point from there. Well, DIY Detail was started... Uh, originally by another another company. They make chemicals for a lot of different companies and they wanted their own brand. And their own brand aimed specifically the do-it-yourselfer. I do a lot of consulting in the industry. I was brought on as a consultant to help develop the products. And at one point they said, well, we need a spokesperson. And the first person that came up in my mind was Nick. And uh, so they approached Nick, made him a great offer, and here's Nick. They saw a video of the two of us together. And when they saw that, they called me back and said, yeah, Nick is great, but the two of you have a great chemistry together. And uh, so that started a lot of negotiations. And in the end, well, we're owners of the company. So we're founders. Yeah. Uh, we have ownership in the company. It is ours. Yes, we have other investors, but it is our products. Everything is us behind this. And trust me, you would prefer it this way. I know it sounds like this big business thing. It's not. But you would prefer it this way versus Nick and Ivan decided to get some batches of chemical in the garage and like, we're going to formulate this product line for you. No, like, this is the best way for this to happen. Like, yeah. The behind the scenes logistics of getting this stuff shipped to you, the relationship with a chemist who's been in the business for decades. Yeah. Just, just all of the behind the scenes stuff. It's very, very, very beneficial yeah. to have us working together and then have a little bit of infrastructure behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah, and with my industry knowledge and contacts and stuff, well, not all these products are made in the same factory. 
we went out and got, you know, like our ceramic coating, the people that make the ceramic coating for us are not the same people that make the polish because they each have, each one of the factories has their specialties. And it doesn't matter what brand you're buying, there's not many, or not any for that matter, but there might be one or two, but there's not many brands that actually make everything that they sell in their own factory because their factory isn't adapted to certain things. And certain chemicals in the same factory are not safe to have, the raw chemicals. So those are things we need to take into consideration. A lot of manufacturers, someone is really good at making product A. Well, there might be three or four other brands that buy product A from that company. They're different formulations. They're not the same. It's not just white labeling. But the base products that go into that, they're used to working with them and they're good at working with them. So those are you know, sort of the behind the scenes of the industry. Uh, especially with ceramic coating installers. Ceramic coating installers tend to have this very much, uh, meurtre. how do you say it in English? Uh, <laughs> I sorry, I, I'm, I'm no always idea. translating. But you know, the, this. Hold on, can you imagine having English be your second language and how always translating would be your default in America? Like, you know, having some credit. Like, I didn't even know English was your second language yeah, it for is. years. So yeah. that's also worth knowing about you. Yeah, anyway, but anyways. On. Uh, so the, the pack mentality, and it's funny that as you know, I worked for ceramic coating companies before. The reps from the companies would go out for supper together. We talk to each other on a regular basis. We're friends, and the installers of those ceramic coatings, if they knew that, and they sort of know, but they just prefer to ignore it. Uh, you know, one brand of coating installer and another brand of coating installer. To them, they can't be seen in the same city, never mind the same room, because yeah. you know, it's just not compatible. Whereas in the back end of things, uh, all the companies tend to work together. We know that the market is big enough for everyone. And there's not a, there's not a lot of animosity and there's not a lot of uh, backfighting or backstabbing in this industry. It's actually quite a, a good industry that way from the manufacturer's perspective. From the installer's perspective, eh, there's a bit of backfighting. Uh, Speaking of, you know, when I was a ceramic and coating installer uh, and you were with another company and I felt like I can't tell Ivan that I've left this one and gone to that one. Mm -hmm. It's just sort of funny. But back in those days when I first started learning about carpet cleaning and went to carpet cleaning technician school and learned about pH and all that. Yeah. And Nick M on there, which great name, by the way, said, I remember Ivan would come to your shop and rearrange it with you. Yeah. Instant classic. And I watched that video recently and my shop was a freaking dump like I look at that and he came in and we just like torched the whole thing we actually away. threw so Sylvie and I my wife we threw Nick out of the shop and said just <laughs> go away when you come back your shop will be at least practical I was living in the shop at the time I was going through a divorce it was a whole thing yeah and uh, it was very really awesome that they came and did that and so just a big part of my life over the last few years and yeah I'm really grateful for that and I'm grateful to be here like uh, Teddy I think said where do you see the DIY business going in the next three to five years? What's the end goal? At what point would you both say, ah, we made it? So the last part of that question is, I feel like we made it. Like, I feel like I made it. Like, I'm sitting here. This is my life. We're talking about cleaning cars. Right. We're growing a business. We have 45 people watching who care about this. And, like, that to me feels like I won the lottery. Yeah, and, and it's not, for myself, it's not a financial journey. I've been retired for three years now. So this is me coming sort of out of retirement, semi-retirement. But the whole goal of DIY detail and the reason I'm here and you know, part of the reason Nick is here is we want to make detailing fun. And that is really my goal in this. So I felt, you know, like you said, we've already succeeded in what we needed to do. Now we just need you know, more, a few more people to buy products. Yeah, but, well, we're not a profitable company yet, no. but we believe in what we're doing and we're getting a lot of people who are trying our products. So we're really grateful for that. Yeah. And I would just say like the question of, ah, have I made it? You know, there, there, you don't like, you don't just make it ever and just be like, oh, I'm all done. Right. Yeah. And no. that's what you have to realize as you get older is like the process is it. This is it. Yeah. Right. This is now, this is the only now you're ever going to have. And then it's now again. So exactly. can I be okay in the now, even though okay, we're not exactly where financially that like we want to be in three years. I'm like, no, we are making progress. And I think a uh, sense that I am, I am making progress and every day I'm trying to improve and I feel like I'm on that path. That's sort of the goal. Yeah. You know, and I think we're there. We're every day we're learning, we're growing and 
Yeah, and I know, ramble, technically, I'm homeless. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I looked at that video when he revamped my shop in like 2019, 2020, and your old LaCroix cruisers had retired on it. I yeah. just chuckled. I'm like, you're not yeah. retired. You're never going to retire. Um, Skull said, Nick taught me to explore carpet cleaning. Ivan inspired me to use rinseless wash, so I've benefited from you both. He says, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, uh, Matt McKay said he appreciated my uh, handwritten note for your your uh, your purchase. So thank you, Matt. Appreciate you. Now, as our volume of sales grew up, the handwritten notes uh, from Nick may slow down a little bit. I spent three hours writing handwritten notes, which I love, but I'm like, I'm trying to pump out content, you know, and get to more people, right? Like build a massive business or whatever we're doing here. And so, uh, so those handwritten notes will eventually become collector's items. Keep them. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That signature will be worth three cents. Yeah, maybe, maybe two. Because the paper was worth three <laughs> yeah, cents. Exactly. I don't know. Uh, Kyle Simmons says, last wash I used rinse as a pre-wash. Incredible suds in the foam can and bucket. Quick beads on the wet paint. Finally dry with ceramic gloss. Incredible finish now. Rain slides off immediately. Mm. Kyle, that is the ultimate wash right there. Yeah, exactly. That gets me excited. I'm going to check the phone. Yeah. So, and we're going to have to wrap this up eventually because Nick's phone is uh, yelling at us that we have no battery left. And my phone that we're using for this probably is saying roughly the same thing. We've been on this for 90 minutes, Ivan. Well, I think that's it's amazing. I love that. Let's and, keep it going. Well, and no. <laughs> That's no, like Kramer. We, we need to let these Kramer's people go. Kramer's going to run out of gas in Seinfeld, and he decides to keep it going. <laughs> yeah. we got to let him go. But I do want to... So JB said, Nick, because of your old videos, I learned about the NCAP Spot Carpet Cleaner, which I use all the time. That stuff is legit. Thank you. Thank you, JB. So I went down the rabbit hole into carpet cleaning. Work. Yes. And that's one question I would have for y'all, because, like, you can use all clean, and it's going to work great, you know? Right. Scrub it on use a microfiber towel to mop it up on carpets and upholstery, it's going to get out a lot. Would you be interested in a more high-level um, encapsulation-style carpet cleaning chemical for our lineup? Because I have a lot of relationships in the industry. I think we could work on something really good. I just don't know if it fits the DIY brand. Let me know in the comments what you guys think because I think that we could help people understand how a product like that worked yeah. without the need for an extractor, but it could work really well. Exactly. Anyway, NCAP Spot's a great product because it uh, uses encapsulation cleaning. Yes. Where, you know, when it, when it dries, the dirt is removed from the fi fiber, and then when it dries, it's crystallized. Yeah. And so it'll vacuum right up. So encapsulation cleaning is really awesome, and you don't need extraction for it. Um, okay. It's about... Uh, <laughs> okay, Teddy wants to know, do you gel your mustache every day? No, this is, uh, it's been this way for 30-some yeah, years. It just stays like this. Oh, Ryan L says, okay, Ryan, how many times have I, <laughs> thank you for watching this whole yeah. time, Ryan. He says, detailing videos are great and all, but they get a little stale with only one person. You two together add an enjoyable and needed X factor. Thanks, man. Well, thank you, Ryan. I appreciate it, because I can kind of play the interviewer and let him talk, and then I can just yeah. ignore well, if, him. Well, if you ever get to go to Ryan's shop, he shares the shop with a world-renowned Porsche mechanic. No kidding. And Bob is just a really interesting guy, and the two of them play off each other. They're arguing all day long. They're you know yelling at each other, but it's in fun, and you know it's a really nice shop environment. So Ryan's got a, a great thing going there. Awesome, and we appreciate you because like y'all are watching with us ninety minutes yeah. into this thing. Um, how brilliant is Ivan in French? Euh, je parle aussi bien le français que l'anglais, même je parle mieux en français qu'en anglais. Donc, euh, c'est la même chose. Someone else asked a question in French from Arch Eagle. Yeah. Can you say it out loud? Sorry for this in French, but I don't know how to explain it in English. J'ai un ami qui possède trois commerces ici au Québec. Est-ce que possible qu'il puisse vendre vos produits dans son commerce? Certainement. So he's asking, I have a friend that uh, has three businesses in Quebec. Could he sell the products in Quebec? Definitely. Uh, we have Carzilla.ca in uh, Western Canada, but no, we don't have anyone in Quebec. So, oui, uh, on aimerait ça avoir quelqu'un au Québec. Si vous avez des suggestions, s'il vous plaît, les envoyer. You answered it the first time in English and then in French? Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, I mean, we are open to distributors out there. If yeah, you want to definitely. distribute our products. Yeah. Um, and we want to shout you out if you're doing that. And so, again, IDS Car Care. Yeah. Nick Rudder. Uh, is repping us in Florida right. and uh, Carzilla in Canada. And yeah, and GF. JF. JF, yeah. GF is how we say JF in French. So, yeah. Uh, 
JF detailing supplies in Puerto Rico. Detailing Made Simple says one thing that's underrated is your magic buffer towel. My favorite, so plush and soft. Yeah, so I've been a towel snob my whole life. And, uh, and I was like, if we're gonna offer towels, like we're just coming into the market, people are gonna be very skeptical, like another detail company. Like let's make awesome, let's make awesome decisions about what towels we're gonna bring to market. And this is an awesome drying towel. Yeah. I mean, like this doesn't even look like anything. You're like, what is this piece of crap? And this will dry a whole car. As the kids say, no cap, which means I think no lie, no joke. I don't know, I can't really say that. But this is an awesome towel to dry. And then our magic buffer towel, I think it's that one. I, uh, I, think, it, it, it's got, I think it's the blue one. The super, pl we have. Um, oh, on yeah. Our, yeah, so. That's our two-sided towel. Yeah, so this is an awesome towel. So it's got a short nap on one side and then it's quite plush on the other. Um, we have an entire towel lineup. Obviously, I think our star towel is the, uh, the clay towel. And uh, Ivan, did you invent this style of clay towel? I developed it, yeah. You developed it? I don't want so to. So the, per the perforated clay towel was yeah. my fault. And this is the magic buffer. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, very soft, plush. Uh, I don't know the GSM number offhand, but it's a edgeless towel, just a, a great towel all around. Absolutely. So just trust us, our towels are high quality. And if you're like, well, I don't know, 30% off Black Friday sale. Does that apply to towels yep. too? Yeah, it just doesn't apply to the IK Foamer or the Kranzler. Right, because of map pricing from yep. those companies. Minimum advertised pricing. pricing. Yeah, we have to stick to that. But our towels, our chemicals, 30% off through Black Friday at midnight. You're not yep. gonna get a better deal. Free shipping over $49. Uh, Carolina's Auto Detailing says, would love an end cap carpet product currently using NCAP Clean DS2. Uh, I don't know how many of y'all uh, follow Luke from Auto Wilson, uh, from Wilson Auto Detailing, but he, he uses NCAP Clean DS2. Yeah. And I'm just gonna say, two years before he started using it, I was out there on YouTube talking about yeah. it. So I, I'm, I'm about that carpet cleaning life. Exactly. My brain is starting to get a little fuzzy after 90 minutes on uh, YouTube Live, but. Um, and our batteries are screaming at us, they're red on both phones. So yep, yep. Before it, before it dies on us, we want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you guys. And, you know, another, another live. So having a lot of fun and we'll see you next week in the podcast. And now we have the awkward silence at the end. So.